Hey everybody. So this one is going to probably be a little heady. And so if you're not up for it, go ahead and skip it. It's not going to talk a lot about symptoms. It's not going to talk a lot about what to do. It's actually going to talk about a paper that I read recently that a friend of mine sent me. It was an article called The Energetic Cost of Allostasis and Allostatic Load. Very big words, okay? And that's why I'm saying this might get a little heady. But if you're interested in potentially a theory as to what's going on with us, okay? I think there's something embedded in this article and in this theory of allostasis and allostatic load that can help us understand why we can um, experience what we're experiencing and the wide range of it from um, distressing symptoms that are uncomfortable to debilitating symptoms that basically alter the course of our lives and leave us um, non-functional for long periods of time. So if you if you want to stay with me, I'm going to I'm going to kind of go through this a little bit and I'm not going to go through the entire article by any means. I'll see if there's a way that I can um, attach it. I don't know where if I can, but I will try to do that. Um, but this was an article and I'm trying to figure out when it came out. Um, I don't really see a date on here. I think it's a relatively recent article, actually. Um that came out in the Journal of Psycho Neuroendocrinology. I didn't even know there was a journal for psycho neuroendocrinology, but I'll tell you what, if there were ever a group of people that need uh, psycho neuroendocrinologists, we are those people, right? So the, the concept of allostasis, if you've never heard of that before, it's basically a big fancy word for um, what we as living organisms have evolved into in terms of having an ability to anticipate both internal and external. So both internal inside of, inside of ourselves as well as environmental um, disturbances and how we mobilize to adapt to those to minimize problems, okay? So we anticipate, um, you know, maybe a virus, how our body kind of, you know, mobilizes with the white blood cells or the temperature, doing whatever it has to do to kind of minimize that. Or stress is a big one in terms of that, external stressors. But it's basically, again, the way that um, we have learned to adapt, um, to anticipate these problems so that we minimize how far we're going to deviate, right? This is why, um, you know, we experience stress in our lives and we don't go jump off cliffs, most of us, okay, um, because we've we've figured out ways to be like, ooh, there's a little bit of a deviation there. Today's a little bit of a harder day. Um, you know, we can think about it like today's going to be a little bit of a harder day. Time to make sure I have my extra cup of coffee or my orange juice or my good breakfast, or that I'm really in not going to fight with my spouse this weekend because I've got that big presentation on Monday, right? So we're we're constantly in that. You know, I've used that term mentalomics. Before, which which is again the economy of our mind, but this is a larger term about the economy of our body and minds, and how we manage stress and how we manage uh, internal stressors, illness, stress, um, tension, difficulties, whatever internally and externally, and that's called that's called allostasis. We all do this, okay, and probably many of us did it quite well before we kind of, you know, landed in this hellhole that we're in. Um, but if what led you to the benzodiazepine to begin with was the fact that things were building up, things had become too much, that's when you start to move into what they call allostatic states. And then um, and then it moves into what they call allostatic loads and allostatic overloads, okay? So That's where I became really interested in this is because it began to talk about the fact that when you stay in a a, a state of stress, in a prolonged state of stress, which is in essence what happens to us when our limbic system won't stop firing, right? It's it's shooting off that adrenaline, which then of course begins to shoot off the cortisol. Because if you go back to my videos, remember the adrenaline is kind of like the first responders, Right? But you keep the adrenaline going long enough, and that signals for the um, 
for basically the second responders to show up that feed the first responders, right? And so, again, if we're going to think about benzos, uh, um, adrenaline is like the Xanax racing in, doing its job hard and fast, and Valium and uh, cortisol is like the Valium, a little bit slower to the game, but packs a punch and sticks around longer. What we know for us is we have a lot of both going on. We have these adrenaline surges, the adrenaline flushes, and we stay in this prolonged state that brings in this cortisol, and it doesn't go down. Okay, This is why we stay in these prolonged states. And in these prolonged states, this is where you start to develop what is called allostatic load. So allostatic load is basically the biological wear and tear that this at this added energy staying this added energetic state that we get in there's a biological wear and tear um, on on our on our neurology on our endocrine system on our meta and our metabolic system on our cardiovascular system our immune system and other states that when we are in chronic stress um, we can move into these kind of stress related diseases or illnesses or injuries that we have now remember this paper was not written about benzo withdrawal it was not written about us at all, but it makes perfect sense for why we might be in an allostatic load that I just described, right? But then you can move into um, an, ad- an allostatic overload. And this is where there's been long-term energy-dependent functional or structural dysregulation and breakdown that arises as a consequence of a chronic allostatic load. This leads to all sorts of of disease progression and problems, again, on the molecular, cellular, physiological, mental level, on the endocrine, neurology, metabolic, cardiovascular, immune, and all of our other systems, okay? So again, they're not talking about us necessarily, but they are. Because what happens for us is it might have been an allostatic state that led us to take the benzo to begin with, stress at home, inability to sleep, um, whatever it is, okay? Uh, there's some people, uh, me included, that that came went on the benzo not necessarily for an allostatic state. I didn't necessarily go on for anxiety or something like that. However, I was having all sorts of symptoms um, as a result of a bad antibiotic reaction that looked like extreme anxiety and created all kinds of problems. So it kind of doesn't matter um, I was put on, again, because I'd moved into um, a state that was pulling more energy than I had to give it, okay? And the longer we stay in these states, we move into allostatic load, and the longer we stay in the allostatic load, the more we can move into an allostatic overload, in which case everything I just said, the neuro, the neurology, the endocrine, the metabolic, the cardiovascular, the immune, um, get affected on the molecular, cellular, physiological, and mental level, okay? This is kind of fascinating to me because this is exactly what we're trying to get our doctors to understand has happened, right? Um, You know, we're still operating on that very superficial level with them of, hey, I took this drug and I feel like shit on it, or I can't get off of it, or I need so much more to get the desired result, okay? Okay. But for those of us that are probably listening to these videos and audios, we have entered into an allostatic overload of some sort, where we have been in a chronic dysregulated state, okay? We've been in a chronic allostatic load that has led to an acceleration of all sorts of problems on all of those levels. Now, what's interesting is, why is it that they can recognize this as a real thing And when they're talking about it in this article, they're just talking about life stressors that can cause this, that people that maybe live in in times of war or abusive relationships or living with addicts or, you know, some sort of kind of chronic dysfunction or chronic stress can create these states that lead to loads, that lead to overloads on an allostatic level. It's so interesting to me that obviously people get this, that our nervous systems, you know, that are, you know, basically our entire electrical system is highly connected and interconnected with all of these other symptoms, systems, excuse me, and that when there is too much stress, all of these things can break down. 
it's, it's fascinating to me that this article exists because it's exactly what we're trying to explain. And we're talking about um, a wear and tear, a biological wear and tear that's affecting us cognitively, mentally, and physically. So I'm, I'm going to be coming back on more, and, and I don't know how clear this has been, but I found this kind of fascinating in terms of a way in, potentially, to begin to help understand and explain um, why um, we are feeling the way we're feeling and why even within our group, you know, like for example, a year and a half, a year and a, a year and a half ago, I was unable to watch television, hardly able to talk on the phone. I had a kind of a form of akathisia where I kind of needed to move my legs all the time. I grunted and groaned. I cried. Uh, I was a disaster um, mentally, physically, um, somewhat cognitively, but definitely mentally and physically. Um, I was at an allostatic overload for those months. Now I'm, you know, a year and a half later, I'm still in my taper. I'm not well by any means. I'm not back to my baseline. So I would consider myself still in some sort of an allostatic state. And on my bad days, I'm in an allostatic load and I can tip into that allostatic overload, which again, just simply means that whatever adaptations, strengths, um, uh, skills, um, you know, learned and innate um, that I had access to at one point are not doing the job anymore. I stay in a heightened state of stress, I st- and which creates this spillover effect, right? Imagine it like a, a cup filling up, right? And last summer, my cup just couldn't take anything. It, you know, the, the the when that cup is full and it's tipping over, right? The telephone can be too much. The doorbell can be too much. The sight of somebody you love can be too much. Anything can tip you over into that allostatic overload, okay? Because you're just full all the time and you're constantly tipping over. And then what we hope happens with enough time, whether that's through holding your taper or getting off the mat or, you know, for each person it's different, that cup slowly, slowly, slowly begins to not tip over quite so much. And it, it, it just goes down a half an inch. And if it can just go down a half an inch, then we move from maybe that allostatic overload to allostatic load. We're still close to the top. It doesn't take much. It takes one argument with our partner. It takes one nasty call with somebody we care about. It takes one additional stressor and boom, the, te- the, the it fills up and tips back over. And so what we hope happen, you know, so what we hope happens over time is that we can continue to get that cup lower and lower and lower. And we're still in an allostatic state. We still don't feel well. We're still we're still too over mobilized because of our chronic stressors. Um, but we're not quite in that load and overload state. And so that's kind of where I live most of the time is in a state um, all the time in a load the majority of the time and on occasion an overload. And again, this this affects us on a molecular organ, cellular, intercellular, physiological, behavioral, cognitive, physical level, right? And it affects all of our symptoms and it creates this wear and tear. So when people say, why do I why do I have POTS symptoms and I you know I can't walk around and move around? Why do I have vertigo? Why do I have such extreme fatigue? Why do I only have mental symptoms? Why do I have gut issues? Why can't I you know whatever it is like literally scalp to toe? We just said, we just said when something's hitting you on a molecular organ, cellular, intercellular, physiological, behavioral, cognitive level there is no stone left unturned, right? And so I, I I was fascinated by this article and I'm going to do a lot more research into it because again, they're describing us. They're describing what's happened to us. And even though in this article, they're talking again about life stressors or or different things that can happen in the course of your life that can lead to this overload, um, we got there and maybe it was the straw that broke the camel's back was the benzo withdrawal maybe there maybe there wasn't a back to break maybe we were doing okay and it was just so significant these drugs just pack such a punch 
that it tipped the scales anyway. But I, I think this is a really interesting way to think about what's going on with us and why, you know, what we're always trying to do is to figure out how to get the cup, number one, to stop tipping over every day on us. And then, you know, a full cup is still going to be incredibly uncomfortable. And it's going to take a long time for that cup to really empty all the way out. And in the meantime, this is why we're so susceptible to other stressors, right? Because it fills the cup back up, it tips it back over, and we're affected on all these potential levels again. So allostasis is what we're talking about. And we're talking about, which is again, everyone, that's true of everybody. Everybody has a state of, everyone has the process of allostasis going on if you are alive, because it's the way that you recalibrate to get into homeostasis. Um, it's it's considered stability through change. You know, every day, um, you know, um, I have to adapt to, if it's 96 degrees out, you know, like I went to Houston last weekend, it was 86 degrees when I got there. Um, the next day it was 42 degrees, right? Now, I didn't run around screaming, crying, going, why did this happen? Oh my God, you know, I can't. No, you adapt, right? How do you adapt? You realize, okay, I've got to regulate my body temperature. How do we do that? We turn on the heat. We put on more clothes. We get closer to people. We huddle in. We light a fire. We eat more. We All these different things. That So again, allostasis is what we do to recalibrate. I'm not just going to sit out in 42 degree weather wearing the t-shirt that I was wearing in the 86 degree weather, right? That's a really superficial example, but it's it's one um, that just happened, right? Um, so, you know, there's all kinds of ways that we, um, I may go into town and realize I'm going into town to watch a baseball game, right? So I'm going to anticipate something different than if I was going into town to attend a funeral, Okay, And so my mental state and the things that I might need to do to ready myself for a funeral are going to be different than what I'm going to do to ready myself for a baseball game. Sometimes, though, you know, things pop up suddenly and we have to recalibrate quickly. Some of us are better at that than others. But what happens is when you're in an allostatic state, then load, then overload, is you can't um, recalibrate quickly. You're, 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 you're already you're, you're in the weeds. You know, you're already... You're already, um, you already owe the bank at that point. You know, you're in a deficit model at that point. And so to, you know, when we're in the throes of a really wicked place in our withdrawal, maybe we're more acute and then we get bad news, we don't have the capacity to, to bounce, right? Everything breaks. Everything is, everything is rigid and everything breaks. Nothing bends, nothing's pliable. And that's because we kind of live in this state load or overload of, alios, of allostasis. Anyway, hope that was at all interesting or helpful or, or, or something that, that, that might help us think about this a little bit more. And I'm going to do more reading up on this and probably talking about it more. I will give the uh, caveat before I do another video and say, this is another one on, alios, on allostasis. If you don't want to listen to it, I realize that many of you listening are not feeling well and... Um, hearing a theoretical discussion like this uh, is just not what you need. So um, if you've stuck with me this far, thank you. Um, and uh, But, but you, you know, your loved ones might be listening to this or you might be at a different place in your recovery process where this might make some sense. Thanks, guys.